Welcome students. Today we will study MSc Final Chemistry. Paper first, Unit Photochemistry, Topic Actinometry. In our previous lecture, we have studied quantum yield. So let us begin the introduction of actinometry. To determine the quantum yield of a particular reaction, it is necessary to know incident light flux. There are a number of techniques available for the measurement of incident light flux. The equipment used for this measurement is known as actinometer and the phenomenon is actinometry. Actinometry provides determination, measurement and standardization of the light sources. For perfect calibration, a standard lamp, light source of a known color, temperature is used to standardize the detector, which may be a thermopile or a bolometer, a photocell and a photomultiplier. Let us study them one by one. Thermopile it is made up of thermocouples which are connected in series and generate an EMF on heating. Here is the figure showing thermopile. Then comes bolometers. Bolometers are thin blackened strips which change resistance on absorption of radiation. Thermopile and bolometer both are not able to discriminate between the quality of radiation, but the results are integrated with the total energy absorbed. Now let us study photocell. A photocell consists of a photosensitive cathode and a collector anode enclosed in a evacuated bulb. Here is a diagram showing vacuum tube photocell. So you can see a photocathode anode enclosed in an evacuated transparent bulb and radiations are shown at the top. Quanta of electromagnetic radiation having energy greater than the threshold value of metal composing photocathode cause ejection of electrons from the surface of photosensitive cathode. These ejected electrons are collected and make current to flow through the circuit. The intensity of photocurrent thus generated will be linearly proportional to the incident light intensity. The photosensitivity of the cathode depends on wavelength. For blue and red regions of the spectrum, the photocells of different cathodes must be used. It is therefore necessary to calibrate the photocell against standard photocell to make correct wavelength sensitivity. Amplification may be employed. Now let us study what is a barrier layer photocell. It is a semiconductor device in which Impinging photons promote the electrons from valence band to conduction band by making energy available to cross the energy gap. A photovoltage is generated which can be measured by a voltmeter. Such photovoltaic devices have a large surface area and are easy to operate. They are used 
in many simple colorimeters and fluorimeters and is light meters for cameras. So here is a diagram showing barrier layer photocell. Now let's, let us study photo multipliers. So here is a diagram showing photo multiplier. Now let us study it. It is a vacuum tube photocell with a sealed in set of dynodes. Each successive dynode is kept at a potential difference of 100 volts. So, the photoelectrons ejected from cathode surface are accelerated at each step. The secondary electrons ejected from last dynode are multiplied so that 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 7 fold amplification of electron flux is achieved. This allows simple devices such as micrometer to measure weak light intensity. Background thermal emission can be minimized by cooling the photomultiplier. Now what is chemical actinometry? A convenient method for standardization of light source in the laboratory is the use of a photochemical reaction whose quantum yields have been determined by a standard source. During irradiation, absorption must be constant throughout the exposure. Hence, the reaction must be photosensitized. The basic expression is the one which defines the quantum yield phi of a photochemical reaction. So, phi is equal to rate of reaction upon rate of absorption or phi is equal to number of molecules decomposed or formed upon number of quanta absorbed or phi is equal to minus dc upon dt or plus dx upon dt upon i0 into fraction of light absorbed. The fractional light absorption can be measured in a separate experiment by knowing the quantum yield phi and estimating the extent of decomposition I0. The incident intensity can be calculated in the units of Einstein centimeter minus 3 S minus 1 falling on the reaction cell. To avoid geometrical errors due to differences in absorptivity of the actinometer solution, and the simple. The same cell is used for actinometry and for the reaction under conditions of equal optical densities. There are a number of photochemical reactions which have been found suitable for actinometry. They are useful in the specific wavelength range. Now let us study types of actinometers. So first is the ferry oxalate actinometer. It is one of the most accurate and widely used actinometer. It covers a wavelength range between 250 Nm to 577 Nm. This actinometer was first used by Parker and Hatchard for the photo decomposition of potassium ferry oxalate. Irradiation of ferry oxalate solution results in reduction of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, which is estimated colorimetrically by using orthophenanthrolene as complexing agent. The OD at 510 nm of the deep red color produced is compared with the standard. The quantum yield for Fe2 plus formation is nearly constant within the wavelength range and shows negligible variation with temperature, solution, composition and light intensity. The recondent actinometric solutions are used are shown in the table.
Second type of actinometer is urinal oxalate actinometer. This type of actinometer works between the wavelength range from 208 nm to 435 nm. Since the UO22 plus ion acts as photosensitizer for the oxalate decomposition, the light absorption remains constant, but rather long exposures are needed for final accurate oxalate titrations. It is now out of use due to low quantum yield of about 0.5. Next is malachite green leucocyanide actinometer or MGL actinometer. MGL is particularly useful in the range 220 to 300 nm where it absorbs strongly on irradiation. MGL is converted into ionized form Mg plus which has a very strong absorption at 662 nm. The quantum yield for production of Mg plus is 0 0.91 over the given range. And the last is Rainix salt actinometer. The useful range for this actinometer extends from 316 to 735 nm and therefore is convenient in the visible region. Rainix salt is commercially available as ammonium salt. It should be converted into the potassium salt. The ligand field bend extends from 400 nm to 735 nm. On irradiation, equation of the complex proceeds with release of thiocyanate. Quantum yields are calculated as moles of thiocyanate released per Einstein of light absorbed. The concentration of the actinometer solution should be such as to absorb nearly 99% of the incident light. The pH is adjusted between 5.3 to 5.5. The quantum yield for the reaction over the visible range lies between 0 0.27 to 0 0.3. Thank you so much.